FutureCon 2015. Acompanhe a cobertura completa no Canaltech. O ser conectado produz cada vez mais dados e isso pode ser considerado um problema para as telecoms, porque como lidar com tanto dado nas redes 3G e 4G? Por isso mesmo, uma tendência é o uso do Wi-Fi para ajudar nessa conexão. Para falar um pouco a respeito disso, converso agora com o Cash Shake, ele é VP de Marketing da Rucos, que está aqui no nosso estúdio para conversar a respeito. First of all, thanks for coming, Cash. Thank you for having me, Igor. Really excited to be here. So, how are, how are telecoms using Wi-Fi to cope with all these data nowadays? Um, one of the trend in, in the telecom industry is really the convergence of cellular, uh, 4G LTE or any of these uh, cellular technologies with uh, Wi-Fi. And it's really because of a couple of challenges. Uh, one of the challenges is indoor coverage because uh, even yeah. if you put the, the base station a half a mile away and try to punch the signal inside the building, the challenge becomes the glass is it's very difficult for the signal to go through the glass and especially in places like Sao Paulo where there is a lot of concrete, right, yeah. right? So it's very difficult to go through the concrete walls. So you need to have the radios inside and if you want to have the radios inside, you know, the way to do it is to leverage both the radios. And the other thing is uh, the smartphones. All of us have these smartphones and these smartphones are really converging a lot of technology. So all of the things that went before, the telephone, the voice, the video, cellular, Wi-Fi, is all converged in a cell phone and everybody's using the cell phone now. And these cell phones have both the radios. So it has the cellular radio as well as the Wi-Fi radio. And there are technologies um, that are helping uh, the networks, the wireless network, to be able to leverage both Wi-Fi radio as well as the cellular radio. So on the, on the smartphone, there are two main things. You have voice and then you have data. There are technologies such as Wi-Fi calling, which is really helping the voice. So what it does is for the narrowband voice, it leverages one or the other radio. So if you have the Wi-Fi signal available, the call will be paced through Wi-Fi. If you have the LTE or the cellular, cell, cellular band available, it will place the call through that radio. And then it becomes a matter of which one, whichever band is available or, or the radio is available, the call will go through one or the other. So that's really one of the technology and some of the carriers in US especially, uh, such as T-Mobile or Sprint have already introduced Wi-Fi calling. Um, and it can be built as well. That's the neat thing about Wi-Fi calling because it goes through the EPC or the packet core. So the carrier should be able to build uh, both the call, either it's going through the Wi-Fi radio or uh, the cellular radio. Uh, how to implement it? Is it a big issue for the telecoms as well? It's, um, it's, it's pretty straightforward. I mean, because uh, the way the Wi-Fi um, calling works, it's, it's a secure tunnel. So it's based on IPsec. The phones already support these functionalities. So what it does, it, it, use the, it uses the native uh, dialer. Wi-Fi calling has been around for a long time, right? right? I mean, Link or Skype, they were all using these OTT yeah. applications were using Wi-Fi calling. The difference now is the smartphones uses the native dialer to place the, the Wi-Fi uh, call using IPsec tunnel. So the traffic is encrypted at the smartphone and then it goes to the MNO data center and it's decrypted over there. And from Ruckus's perspective, we have technologies that make the Wi-Fi calling really good because we have what we call the Beamflex Plus, which provides a stronger signal. So let's say you and I are talking rather than just blasting the signal everywhere, we direct the signal and the energy towards the receiver, which makes the, the radio, Wi-Fi radio more stronger. We also have technologies uh, that helps with the IPsec. Since the, the traffic is tunneled, it becomes difficult to uh, do the quality of service. So we have technologies such as uh, TOS and heuristic uh, algorithm that can look at the type of the packet that is encrypted over the Wi-Fi and do the quality of service. So first of all, um, you know, it's, it's really flexible. You can use one of uh, the radios. And secondly, from the Ruckus perspective, we enable um, Wi-Fi calling and make it even better. Uh, with our technologies. And what about Wi-Fi for, uh, for places like full of people, for a uh, stadium or for an uh, Olympic venue, for example? Yeah, so, so uh, that's where, again, the challenge becomes uh, everybody has a smartphone and it's really dense. 
um, again, in these places, our technologies uh, such as uh, Beamflex uh, helps get better signals. Um, and also, from the data perspective, there are other technologies that are becoming available that helps the data traffic um, to converge, um, especially um, as it relates to LTE. For example, there is a new standard emerging, LWA, uh, which is LTE in uh, in the unlicensed band using uh, link aggregation. So what happens is you, sh you can use both of the radios, um, the uh, cellular radio as well as the Wi-Fi radio, and most of your data traffic is on the unlicensed band, uh, such as 3.5 gigahertz can be used, or uh, uh, you know, uh, the benefit basically is to be able to use both, both the radios to provide uh, more bandwidth uh, for the user for the data traffic. So if you combine both uh, Wi-Fi calling, which can help with uh, the voice, and then technologies such as LWA can really help with the with the data traffic, uh, with the convergence of these both radios that are available on uh, most of the smartphones now. Great. So smart cities and intelligent cities. How how those the, how those how does these cities can cope with like? new Wi-Fi connections and LTE Wi-Fi connections? Yeah, so, so the cities um, have similar challenges and, and at the same time opportunities. Um, the challenge is obviously how you provide uh, the best signal, uh, either through LTE or, or Wi-Fi, using technologies, as I said, using Wi-Fi calling, or um, we have technologies, what we call the uh, Hotspot 2.0. Yeah. So the Hotspot 2.0 is a technology that the cities can use. So in the cellular world, we have uh, the roaming, right? So you don't have to select the network, it can automatically pick the network. Same, the same. same with uh, Wi-Fi, with Hotspot 2.0, um, it can automatically de detect any of the home network. So you don't have to worry about which SSID, your smartphone should be able to pick this hotspot, and the hotspot is really working with any of the provider on the back end for the home network. Um, it can be uh, the MNO network, or the MSO network, or OTT provider, but the benefit is if you have hotspot uh, 2.0 deployed, you can have the, the roaming, Wi-Fi roaming. And the, the reason the cities are going to, um, uh, uh, the uh, the Wi-Fi deployments with the smart cities is it's really about the digitization to be able to create the advantage for the cities. For example, some of the cities where they have deployed our stuff, um, the business case is really about how the cities can leverage the network to their advantage. For example, if let's say the city has uh, their own parking, which is managed yeah. by the government, uh -huh. they can direct the users since they own the network to those parkings to monetize the network right. they are providing. Because at the end of the day, if this, let's say the CIO of the city goes to the mayor of the city and asks for uh, the, the money to be able to deploy the Wi-Fi, the question becomes, it's a nice to have, but what's my advantage? Uh -huh. The advantage is really the digitization uh, and monetization that uh, is available through uh, through some of these new technologies. So you deploy the Wi-Fi network and then monetize the network and provide these services um, as a part of this smart city Wi-Fi concept. That's great. And what about 5G? Uh, how do you see the evolution until that? Like using Wi-Fi and LTE at the same time, it's like the beginnings of the 5G or can we say that? Yeah, a lot, there's a lot of discussion um, around 5G. Um, a lot of people think, uh, because right now the standard is going through uh, the evolution, a lot of discussions are happening, it may be still a few years away. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people believe that the 5G will be more about the convergence of cellular and Wi-Fi, even more so than a new air link modulation, mm -hmm. right? Because when it went from 2G to 3G, um, it went from GSM to U U UMTS and then LTE, but a lot of discussions for 5G is around the convergence, uh -huh. and as we discuss some of the technologies that are already available, Wi-Fi calling, Hotspot 2.0, LWA, LWA uh, 3.5 gigahertz, the spectrum becoming available for unlicensed innovation. So all of these things are pointing towards uh, the relevance of convergence in uh, as it relates to 5G standard. Mm -hmm. All right, so thank you very much, Cash, for coming here. 
Sure, uh, it's my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Thank you.